Hey friends, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with another day of Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. Okay, my friends, so you remember back in 2018, President Nelson gave a wonderful youth devotional calling all of the youth of the church to the youth battalion to be able to gather Israel. He said something kind of cool with this that I think goes really well with this week. My dear extraordinary youth, you were sent to earth at this precise time, the most crucial time in the history of the world to help gather Israel. There is nothing happening on this earth right now that is more important than that. There is nothing of greater consequence, absolutely nothing. This gathering should mean everything to you. This is the mission for which you were sent to earth. My dear young brothers and sisters, these surely are the latter days, and the Lord is hastening his work to gather Israel. That gathering is the most important thing taking place on earth today. Nothing else compares in magnitude. Nothing else compares in importance. Nothing else compares in majesty. And if you choose to, if you want to, you can be a big part of it. You can be a big part of something big, something grand, something majestic. So many people out there want to be involved in big causes. President Nelson's like, we got the best one for you and the biggest one right here. Now, his wonderful wife, Wendy, said this, Sister Nelson, will we choose to do whatever it takes to fulfill the wonderful missions for which we were sent to earth? While that question simmers on your mind, let's shift and talk about why you are here on earth at this particular time, which is such a unique time in the history of the earth. Why are you here on earth right now? Again, such a good question. People ask that all the time out there in the world. They wonder why they're even here. Why were you not born back in the 1880s or 30 years from now? My dear brothers and sisters, these are indeed the latter days. There has never been a time like this in the history of this world. Never. Premortally, you and I committed to do a great work while we were here on the earth, and with the Lord's help, we will do it. So those who have been brought to the earth at this time period, I really believe, again, just like what was said there, regardless of your age, you're here to share the gospel with others. We don't do it to try to convert others. I think we do it because we are are converted. Conversion is something that is very personal between the person and the Lord. We don't want to stand in the way of that, but because we are converted, we share that gospel. Now, 1 Thessalonians, in fact, you get into all of these chapters. All you got to do is just look at the chapter headings, and this becomes almost like Paul's mission prep class for why we're here. You know, you look at chapter 1, the gospel comes both in word and in power. Chapter 2, true ministers preach in a godly manner. Converts are the glory and the joy of missionaries. Now, I'll talk about the other three tomorrow. But if you focus just on these two right here, you see what you and I are to share with the world. In fact, in the Come Follow Me, it's very clear. Disciples of Christ serve others with sincerity and love. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul's words reveal both the concern and the joy of someone who has given himself wholly to serving God's children, especially in the first two chapters of 1 Thessalonians. You will find words and phrases that describe the attitudes and actions of a disciple of the Lord. For example, what do you learn from, and there's a couple things we'll talk about from here, 1 Thessalonians 1, 5 through 8, and then chapter 2, 1 through 13, about serving the Lord. Think about your own opportunities to serve God and his children. What do you find in these chapters that inspires you to improve your service. Consider asking yourself questions based on what you find, such as, am I an example of the things I know? Now, you go to 1 Thessalonians 1, verse number 7, and it says, so that you were end samples or examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Really, it's to all the world. And I love the way this continues in verse number 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. Here's Paul just saying, it's like, you guys are doing such a good job here. I don't even know if you really need me. So when I think about this phrase, so that we need not to speak anything, sometimes we take the full brunt of responsibility on ourselves when we are sharing the gospel. We think we need to know this many scriptures and we need to be able to have this skill and this skill and this skill. Several years ago, Dieter F. Uchtdorf and Elder Uchtdorf has talked about this many times. He gave a first presidency message called A Word for the Hesitant Missionary. And I think all of us fall into that at certain times. You're hesitant. You're like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I love this statement. And again, he said this many times. A favorite saying of mine, often attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, reads, preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. Implicit in this saying is the understanding that often the most powerful sermons 
commands are unspoken. When we have integrity and live consistently by our standards, people notice. When we radiate joy and happiness, they notice even more. Again, this idea of radiating joy and happiness, all you got to do is go over to chapter 2. And I love the way Paul describes the way he has worked with the Thessalonians. Verse 7, we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. Now, the New Living Translation, one of my favorites, says, we loved you so much that we shared with you not only God's good news, but our own lives too. So as you're going through this and you're sharing the gospel, don't be afraid to just share the happiness that the gospel has brought to you. And if the gospel has not brought you that happiness, then maybe there's some things we need to look at. Many of you know Sister Patricia Holland just passed away this last summer, but Sister Holland gave a wonderful talk back in January. She and Elder Holland, wonderful talk to the young single adults of the church. The talk is called A Future Filled with Hope. Now, the message we share is one thing. How we share it is another thing. Now, Sister Holland said this. She says, it was as someone once said, and she was talking about her own views of the gospel when she was younger. The reason people do not join with you Christians is because you wear your religion like a headache, like a crown of thorns. There is only one person who has had to bear that crown of thorns, and he did it so we might live joyfully, abundantly, and peacefully, and not despairingly. So I love the way Paul talks to the Thessalonian saints here in these first couple chapters and just reminding them, look, how you share the gospel, how you share that joy is a big thing. So make sure that gospel is within you, and then as you do it, let your countenances do some amazing things in teaching. The Holy Ghost is really good at what he does. He's so good, he's the best at it. Let him do the work as you have that gospel within you, and then you share it with other people. I love how that message is brought up in these first couple chapters, and tomorrow we'll talk about the other three, and there's some great things in here to help missionaries share the gospel with the world. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking this video. If you liked what you saw here, please click the like button. Please subscribe. Thanks for sharing these messages. We love that you do that. And of course, if you haven't already, go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.